Hi everybody, and welcome back to Lost Genre Relationships. How long is too long to stay in a relationship that you clearly don't want to be in, but you just feel you have to stay there, somewhat out of guilt? And of course, that is the situation of our next OP. This one's from user Ghost Turtles. How do I divorce my wife, 35 female, when she relies on me, 35 male, for everything? To sum up what's happening, I'm moving toward divorcing my wife, S, whom I've been with for 17 years, since I was 18 years old. The easy way to say it is that S and I don't have a partnership. It's not just that she hasn't had a job since 2013, but that she doesn't do anything to contribute to our relationship. I am the sole breadwinner, take care of our finances, get groceries, clean the house, etc. She doesn't have any friends either because she doesn't make the effort to make them. I actually have to introduce her to people from my life, then politely hint that she should keep in touch. Hey, how's Jen doing? Maybe you should text her. Even then, the relationships always wither. In 2017, after years of soul searching, I asked S for a divorce. She was so devastated that I reluctantly agreed to try marriage counseling. It seemed, finally, to help. She began to apply for jobs and was open to therapy on her own, which I arranged and drove her to because she refuses to drive. But once the immediate danger of divorce no longer hung over our marriage, she reverted to her old ways. It's a pattern. When I ask why she won't apply for jobs, she says she doesn't know if she'll like them and she's interested in something else now. So I pay thousands of dollars for training or classes in the new thing, and after a few months, she quits. When I express my frustration, she cries and says that I make her feel like she can't do anything right. Consciously or not, this is an extremely manipulative way to make me feel like the bad guy and to get out of taking any sort of responsibility. So even if she did get a job, it wouldn't really change things for me because I have 17 years of evidence to show that she won't truly change. I just don't trust or respect her. I don't think she's being malicious, but it almost doesn't matter. We don't have children and I want to have children so much, but I can't have them with her. Although this weekend she said she wants to go to grad school, she also occasionally says she doesn't want to get a job because she wants to be a mom. But I cannot do that to a child. I don't know if Hess has any insight into why it's so clear to me that she couldn't handle motherhood. It's painful. I love her, but I've given her so much support and so many chances and I can't have the life I want if I stay in the marriage. I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but I feel like I am an extraordinary husband and she isn't grateful for anything I do. I will probably have to pay some sort of spousal support, perhaps indefinitely, but I am more than willing to do that if I can have a chance at the life I want. I just am so afraid of hurting her. I know, logically, that it's not my job to live in misery to avoid hurting her feelings, and yet I'm terrified that she'll forever be haunted by the breakdown of the only relationship she's ever had. How do I do this? What do I do? I'm lost and in so much pain. Thank you for your time. Note: I imagine people will say S is depressed. That may be true, but she doesn't think so. As I mentioned, I found her a therapist and would drive her to appointments, but she said she was fine and stopped going after two to three sessions. OP, I think it's like you said, it's not your job to live in misery to avoid hurting her feelings. If you feel your relationship is over and it's been over for so long, then I think the right thing to do would be to ask for divorce. In my opinion, a marriage is a partnership, you guys are equal, and it's not up to one of the two to carry the whole relationship. That's just not right and it's gonna end up burning you up. One final thing I'll say is that in your post you say you don't trust or respect her. I don't think you lost respect, I think you lost admiration, because you wouldn't outright disrespect her, you care for her. However, there is nothing in her that you admire or that motivates you to do something. And that's why trust, respect, and admiration are so important in any relationship. But like you guys know, that's just my opinion. So now let's take a look at two community comments and then an edit from OP, and then we can move on with the update. 
Biggers Dickers, well, somebody likes Monty Python, well, he says, You are married to a bum. Divorcing her will probably be good for her because it will force her to actually start doing something productive with her life. Ultimately, you just have to do it. There is no easy way. Reverend Vader says, The most pertinent piece of info for me is where there is a sudden burst of effort when she sees her cushy number on the line. She may well be depressed, but what this says to me is she is fully aware that she is both using you and her effort in the relationship is nowhere near enough. Once she feels a little comfortable or safe again, she turns off the tap as her default wish is to live off you, not with you. You may want to bend over backwards to help her through guilt, but your wife doesn't feel the same, buddy. People who are comfortable using others don't often care about anyone but themselves in my experience. I think you'll find she doesn't care anywhere near as much about you once you file. If you do divorce her, let your lawyer set out what is fair. You're used to being used and may well agree to things you soon regret once you are out. OP's edit. To clarify a few things, we do not have children and are not in danger of her getting pregnant. S has never been diagnosed with a mental disorder and has no substance abuse issues. A few people have said that from her behavior, S seems unintelligent. Ironically, she's actually very bright. If you believe standardized tests, she has more raw smarts than I do, which sort of makes this situation all the more frustrating. S does conceivably have a place to go if, when, we split. Her parents are good people who have the room and ability to take her in, which I think would be the best way forward. Okay, now that's the whole setup and my opinion that you've already heard. How do you guys think OP should proceed? Let me know in the comment section. And now we're going to move on with the update. Since my original post, I followed your advice to leave my wife which was the same advice I received from literally every other person in my life. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done. I've never wept so hard as I did after I told my now ex, who I'd been with for half my life, that I had filed for divorce and was leaving. But despite any pain and stress I've experienced in the last few months, filing for divorce was by far the best decision I've ever made. And in that time, I've experienced a sense of lightness, possibility, and fierce joy I never knew possible. I am happy to answer any questions you all might have, including those looking for advice or comfort in similar situations. Here are some highlights or takeaways from my personal experience. The divorce process isn't a ton of fun. I had to switch attorneys when I realized the first law firm was unethically making the process more contentious. They just wanted to boost their billable hours, and I will end up paying a not insignificant amount of spousal support for a couple of years. But all of this is a very small price to pay for the freedom I now have. There have been emotional ups and downs for sure. Aside from one brief texting conversation, I haven't spoken with my ex since I left a couple of months ago. Old habits die hard though, and during long weekends alone, I've twice been overcome with guilt about leaving and broken down in tears. I know I don't truly have anything to feel guilty about. I think this is simply part of the process of grieving and extricating myself from the familiar emotional ruts I've taken as reality for so long. Modern dating is strange, and fun, but strange. For context, the last time I was single, my phone flipped, haha, <laughs> so dating apps took some time getting used to. That said, I was very relieved to find that my worst fears, that I would be an undesirable guy to date and would be forever alone, could not have been less realistic. I often had dates with two to four different women per week. I live in a major city, which helps. And more than once, I found myself jokingly asking a lovely woman, Are you sure you're on the right date? Like, have you seen me? I'm not the crypt keeper or anything, but I look like what I am, a mid-30s creative guy who works in tech and owns entirely too much Nintendo memorabilia. Luckily, no ladies bolted mid-dinner. I did not plan on dating seriously for at least six months. But I met a woman on Tinder who is my dream girl and so much more. 
we are deliriously happy. She's a few years younger than I am, but is deeply wise, as well as hilarious, kind, thoughtful, generous, and beautiful. This sounds like I'm making it up, but she's literally a professional model. As I joke with friends, I swear she's real, you guys. She just goes to a different school. There were many folks who reached out and said how much they related to my previous circumstances. So if I had any advice to share to those struggling with leaving a partner who is dependent on them, it would be this. Do not set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. We're on this earth for all too brief a trip and it is not fair to make ourselves miserable just to avoid making someone else uncomfortable. Relationships should be about two people committing together because they want to share their lives, not because one of them needs the other. And anyway, people are more resilient than we give them credit for. Thank you so much Reddit. You helped change and save my life. If I can repay the favor by answering any questions, please let me know. Edit to add. I think this is clear if you read both posts, but I get that most folks won't, so just to be safe. I didn't leave just because of Reddit. Everyone in my life, including friends who loved both me and my ex, believed it was the right thing. Because I tried for years to get our marriage to work. She wouldn't reciprocate, and the effort almost killed me. Reddit offered enormous comfort and further confidence, though I am deeply grateful. Well OP, if divorce is what you needed to get your life back on track and feel good about all of it, then congratulations on it. I'm sorry for your ex because divorce, like you said, isn't fun. I have to say, it does sound like you're really enjoying your new life. So congratulations to you and the best to you and your girlfriend. Now before we finish with this post and move on to the next, let's go through some of the questions the community asked OP and he responded to. Quick notes to address some questions in the comments. What is my ex doing now? Aside from a brief text conversation, we haven't spoken since I left. Through my lawyer, I know that she is living with her parents and is looking for work. In that text conversation, she said she hopes we can be friends and talk when this is over. She also said she understands and respects my decision to not be in contact with her. Whether or not we'll have a relationship after this process, I truly don't know, but I admire the strength it took to send that magnanimous message and I wish her only happiness and the best. How did my ex's parents take this? They understood completely. They didn't even ask why I was leaving. They already knew, which was both comforting and sad. What did my original lawyers do that made me seek new counsel? Well, they weren't billing me for hours they didn't work. Rather, they were creating unnecessary work so that they could have more hours of work to bill. Basically, they were misinterpreting my ex's lawyer as being much more aggressive and litigious than he actually was. I found this out when they described an email conversation they had with him, then, accidentally I assume, sent me the actual conversation as part of an unrelated email forward. The real conversation was nothing like what they'd reported. There were a lot of things like that. You're not actually dating a model because that is ludicrous. Or, haha, you're dating a model, have fun paying for her life too, Einstein. Oh yeah, totally. I agree. It is ludicrous. Especially since I basically have the physique of a guy who loves ordering fitness DVDs but does not love opening them. But she really is a model and her looks are honestly the least beautiful thing about her. Also, she's 30 and knows modeling won't last forever, so she's already fielding offers to go back to work as a psychological counselor. How did my ex react when I told her about the divorce? She was terribly upset and lashed out at me verbally. I'd expected that and don't begrudge her for it. And I'd made arrangements for people she loves to be nearby and come over right after that conversation so that she wouldn't be alone. Why are you in another relationship so quickly? Have you, uh, actually met your girlfriend? AKA, is she even real? I definitely didn't intend to go into another relationship so soon. But things have gone incredibly well so far, and I cannot wait for my new girlfriend to use the money I sent her to get her buried inheritance out of Nigeria so we can finally meet. Joking. 
In all seriousness, these are great and totally fair questions. In fact, my friends and family, while absolutely thrilled to see me happy, were also concerned that I was jumping in too quickly until they met my girlfriend, W. Saw what I see and fell in love with her as well. W is, in some ways, the opposite of my ex. She won't let me pay for anything outside of date night costs. For instance, she's very independent and she has a professional career as a psychologist that she's looking forward to returning to whenever the modeling time in her life is through. I'm sure I have a lifetime of lessons yet to learn, but although I will make mistakes in this and any relationship, I won't be repeating the mistakes from my marriage. Promise. I've received so many messages. I'm overwhelmed by your kindness and deeply moved by your requests for advice. Thank you all so much again. All right, and that lets us wrap up that story. Good for OP. So now let's move on to the next story. Do you guys think it's okay for family and friends to pressure somebody to stay with their girlfriend just because she got pregnant? Oh yeah, also she cheated and the baby is not OP's. This one's from user Throwaray Risey. My, male 24, long-term girlfriend, female 22, cheated on me, got pregnant, but everyone around me keeps pressuring me to stay with her. So we grew up together in a small town, known each other for our whole life, and eventually fell in love when she was 17 and moved to the city together two years ago. I work as a carpenter and she's still at uni. Two weeks ago, she suddenly dropped the news that she's three weeks pregnant. I know for sure it cannot be mine because I always use protection and never slept with her under alcohol or drug influence. I don't drink or smoke. So I pressured her and she confessed that she slept with an exchange student during a school vacation trip. She said he's been hitting on her for weeks but the sleeping together was unplanned. That's why he didn't have a condom prepared and she didn't have pills ready. And it's only a one-time thing and she has no feelings for the guy anymore. I was totally in shock, but after a day, I decided that I can't stay in this relationship anymore. First, I am not ready to raise a child that is not my own. Second, I don't know if I'm able to forgive her for betraying me, at least not at the moment. So, I break it off. Asked my boss if I can stay at the worker rooms, for temporary workers, at the warehouse and let my girlfriend stay at our place till she finds a house. I pay full rent because only I work. So eventually our families and our mutual friends got the news and now they are all pressuring me to get back with my girlfriend, except for my sister who supports me. They say it's wrong to abandon her at a time like this. Especially my dad, who I had a fight with every two days because of this. He said he knows she's a good girl, just a young woman that's made a mistake, that I should stay with her and give the child for adoption. And my friends keep messaging me, convincing me to take her back. One of them even accuses me because I am the reason she moved to the city, so it's my responsibility. Now, I am heartbroken, lonely and shattered. Feels like the whole world doesn't give a single F about how I feel. I just want to move to a new city and start everything from zero, but don't have the courage. Maybe some advice from you guys would ease the stress. OP, your girlfriend sucks, your dad sucks, and your friends suck. I'm sorry, but she cannot waive responsibility on this one. She decided to get into bed with that guy. So whatever happened from it, it's her responsibility and she needs to own it. Also, that kid is not your responsibility, so don't even think about that. If your dad likes her so much and thinks she's such a good girl, maybe he should pay for her because she's not your responsibility. And that friend of yours that made those mental gymnastics that this is all your fault, he can go F himself. OP, you need to focus on yourself and move on. That's it. But don't take just my opinion on it. Let's read a few community comments and a small short-term update before we move on to the bigger update. 0% Wrong says, Of course everyone is pressuring you to stay. Someone has to pay for her and the baby to live while she goes to school. Save yourself more heartache and leave now. Sad Eukarotic says, She violated your trust first. She deserved it. 
You have no obligation to care for a baby that's not yours. What I don't understand is why everyone cares so much about your girlfriend when she was the one who cheated on you. Go back to her only if you're 100% sure you can love her and the child unconditionally, which seems pretty impossible to me now. Swede74 says, Not your fault, not your concern. The day she was unfaithful, she left your relationship. The child already has a father. Let him take care of it now. Not your problem. It's his and hers. And now a little update. I didn't think my story would get this much reaction. Thank you all you guys for caring and giving me advice. I tried to read all the comments that I could. I thought I could get through this alone, but you guys make me realize that I am not alone. So I just called my little sister and she will be on the train to the city tomorrow morning to stay with me for the weekend. I also called my parents and her parents and they agreed to come to us this weekend to discuss this matter. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I hope I can update my situation in the next few days. Okay, so now let's move on with the update. Sorry for not updating soon. The initial plan was for our parents to come to us, but they called in the last minutes saying they can't come because of their jobs, so we had to take the train back to our hometown last Tuesday. So, because they didn't follow the plan, my sister and I had the whole weekend talking about my decision. Mostly, she asked questions and I answered truthfully. In the end, it's not changed how I feel. So, I went to the meeting with everyone on Tuesday. I told my sister she shouldn't come. That was the first time I met my ex-girlfriend since the incident. I blocked all my social media and told her not to contact me. I told my parents right from the start that I've made a decision and I am just here to discuss how to handle things. First, a lot of you guys said I should take a paternity test. I proposed the idea, but after a few minutes of discussion, she said she doesn't want to do it. I'm still sure I'm not the father, so it's her choice, really. Second, about the real father. My ex-girlfriend said she contacted the guy herself and he was as shocked and panicked as we were. He will go back to his home soon, so he didn't have a clue how to handle anything neither. And we agreed we won't involve the guy anymore as we wanted nothing to do with him. Third, about the child. She and her parents decided to go for termination. They said because the pregnancy is only a few weeks old, she won't have to go to surgery and can do a home termination. What? They explained a lot, but I don't have much knowledge on this. I think that's the main reason they didn't want a paternity test, because they don't want to wait. I am okay with that. That left us to the final one. I wanted to break up. I'd expected everyone to jump at me, but it surprised me that they didn't. My ex-girlfriend just sat there biting her lips with her head down. I think she already knew what I'd say. In all our years together, I've always been the one who made my opinion heard and she's the silent type. Her parents were total silent. My dad sat there with his arms crossed and my mother tried to ask something once in a while, so it was just me monologuing the whole damn thing. So that's it. We broke up, but I still wanted to remain friends. I still care about her and you just can't completely erase 20 years of your life. We went back to the city together and it's just one and a half hours of us talking about all the good memories since we were children. That's the first time I felt peace in weeks to be honest. We spent the last few days packing up her stuff. She will stay in the city with me till next week for doctor appointments, then go back to our hometown for a while. Thank you guys for making me feel I am not alone in this. Many of you made supportive comments and inboxes to me. I think I will give myself a fresh start. Maybe university is a good choice as my sister is also going to university next year. Well OP, it's great that you're feeling peaceful again and you can focus on yourself and move on with your life. And apart from that, there's not much more to say really. What do you guys think? And so we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and click like. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, here are more videos from my channel that you might enjoy. And having said all that, I will see you guys on the next video.